Yo, what's going on? What's going on? I know it has been quite a while, but um, I'm back. I'm here. Well, I never left, but I am here. So I want to have a pretty good conversation right now with you all. Um, something that's extremely, extremely relevant, extremely relevant, so relevant. I'm just leaving uh, Publix and um, it's so relevant that somebody actually brought it up um, to me while I was picking up a couple things. And uh, they want to know how to boost their immune system. So what I want to do is, um, you, you know, I want to make things practical and sustainable for us. I want to be able to deliver information where you can actually survive and be alone on your own and still continue to get results. I don't want to have anything to do with any kind of system or any kind of like something that's tied in where you have to depend on me or depend on one source to survive and be okay. I'm not a fan of that. I'm all about uh, doing for self, self resiliency, self reliance. I'm all about that because that is your natural God given right. Um, and that just seems right for me. So um, the information that I give also aligns up in that way. You know, I want to give information. I don't want to give you anything spooky or, or any fairy tales. I don't want to give you anything that I can't prove. Um, and I don't want to give you information that's going to allow you to later on be hustled either by myself or by somebody else who's going to use that information. And what I mean by saying things like high blood pressure is a solid killer. That's not true. Uh, saying things like uh, type 2 diabetes runs in your family. It's not true. Now, could I create products to go along with that lie and sell it? Yeah, of course. However, I have these I have this thing called ethics and morals. And then I have uh, these people called, you know, grandmothers and they would, you know, look down on that and they would also put hands on me. So um, I do this for a whole different reason. Mind you, nothing that I have to offer uh, for sale or anything you need to buy. You don't need to buy anything. Everything, all my information that I, I present, you can do naturally. And so right now what we're going to talk about is uh this whole idea of boosting up your immune system. Before I get into it, let me tell a quick story. First of all, everybody type five in the chat so I can make sure that y'all can see me and hear me because right now I don't see anything and I'm not really sure uh, that this thing is working the way it's supposed to. So please do me a favor and type five in the chat if you can see me and hear me okay. All right. So uh, for those who don't know, my name is Edward Williams. I'm the founder and creator of Health by Immune Necessary. Uh, we're about to have a conversation about the uh, the concept or the idea and really the myth of boosting up your immune system. All right, cool. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Sakonya. Thank you, Kita. What's going on? Appreciate it. All right, so y'all can see me and hear me. So um, as you all know, I practice medicine down here in Florida, sunny Florida right now. So that's dope. Um, and I've been doing this for about six years, man, in which I can't believe it's been six years already, but I've been doing this for six years. I practice a very different way. All right. I practice. Approach, which is actually not the approach that you may be taking. Uh, but Malcolm X had a quote. He talks about how this this country goes uh, for the surface glossing over as far as resolutions, as far as solutions. Um, this country prefers to give and deal with superficial resolutions. It never wants to get to the root of a problem because if it gets to the root of the problem and it actually solves the root of the problem then that's it. We're done with the problem. And then, you know, you, you, you're out of money. However, if you deal with superficial problems and, and uh, you know, a superficial solution, then the problem is always going to come because you never dealt with the root of it. And <clears throat> so when we're talking about this whole thing about immune system uh, and disease in general, we have to always go to the root. We have to always get to the bottom of it. And so when I practice medicine, um, that's what I'm always dealing with my patients. That's why, you know, I'm telling I'm the one telling you that uh, type 2 diabetes, not only is it not a disease, but it is preventable and it is reversible. Same thing with high blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity, all those things. I'm the same one that that's yelling from the mountaintops for the past six years that vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a hormone. And if you are African-American, black or African descent and you are vitamin D deficient, then you are playing from an extreme disadvantage because vitamin D for us is everything. Um and I'm going to explain that as well, too. And so right now, when we talk about immunity and immune system, um, I, I had this patient 
I've had several patients. Matter of fact, I've had a lot of patients with similar stories. Um, but, you know, people have to disclose information with me. You know, it's not going to help you to lie to me about a problem that you have. If you don't give me all the evidence and the data I need, you're, you're tying my hands behind my back and I might come to a false conclusion. So um, I had this patient. This guy was about uh, 38 years old. Um, he was about 6'2". He was about 250, 250 pounds. And uh, he came in with the issue. I won't say what the issue was. So as he's talking to me, I'm like, yo, things don't add up. You know, what else is going on? He was, he was a, this guy was a partier. Like he, he was, he's a partier. He was out there. And um, when he gets to talking about his business, he tells you everything. So he started talking about his business. And he's like, all right, doc. He's like, listen, um, a couple of years ago, and by a couple of years, I mean like two years ago, and I've been doing it before, but he's like, um, I started taking steroids. He started taking steroids. He said he started taking uh, testosterone. Uh, H he tried HGH. And, um, and so he believes that maybe the years of doing that might have led to his problem. And I looked at him. I was like, you took steroids and testosterone and HGH? I was like, you, you took it? And, he, and the reason why I was looking at that was because this guy didn't look like he took anything. He did not look like he took would consider to be a uh, muscle enhancement or strength enhancement i'm looking at him and he looks at me and he says i know i don't look like i took it but he's like but apparently you still have to work out you still have to eat right you still have to like do things to get the results i was like yeah now i already knew that because you know i played division one football you know and i'm not gonna go too much into that but i was you know exposed to uh, people who uh, did certain things but also in the military, I was exposed to people who uh, did certain things for muscle enhancement as well. And, um, and when I started practicing medicine, uh, some of my patients are not from America. And so they get their hands on certain things. And I was also exposed to patients who took certain things for muscle enhancement. And so this patient, um, when he started telling me that he did this, I'm looking at him like, you don't look like you did. And, you know, I've seen people who did it before and it's never sustainable. It's never something that you can hold on to. It's never something you can do for a long amount of time. And so he's like, yeah, so apparently you still have to work out. Apparently you still have to eat right. He's like, apparently you still have to quote unquote be healthy. I was like, yeah, yeah. And so when he told me that, I was like, all right, well, this probably is your problem. The reason why I'm telling you that story it's because I want to now bring it back to immunity and the idea of boosting your immune system. What I'm about to say is not airy fairy. Um, I'm not saying this to make you feel good about yourself. I'm saying this because it is truth. Um, you have to understand that you came into this world with essentially everything that you would need to survive and strive in life. Now, you do have outliers who have certain immunologic uh, conditions. You do have people who have uh, congenital issues. Uh, but for the majority of us, Believe me when I say, for the most part, we came into this world with everything we need to survive and strive in this world and thrive. Um, and our bodies itself is a self-healing, self-repairing, and self-regulating mechanism, machine, computer, however you want to call it. All we have to do is provide that system, our bodies, with the proper material that it needs in order to carry out those processes such as uh, thriving and surviving. But when we don't provide it with those things, we start to have issues. The medical community calls these issues diseases, conditions. So <clears throat> since we are the best version of ourselves, and that's what you have to understand, you know, right now, look back up in your family tree and you're going you're gonna to find your mother and you're going to find your father. You are the best version of your mother and father and the ghost continues to go back. And so essentially... You know, African traditions, um, Professor, Professor James Smalls talks about this a lot as well. We are accumulation and a summation of all of our ancestors and we are the best version. We are the best version uh, to exist to date. So when we look at something like the immune system, we need to understand that we already have everything we need. We came fully equipped. We are the best version. However, we cannot exhibit those attributes we cannot exhibit that uh those those uh those those traits that we that were passed down to us if we are playing from a disadvantage if we don't actually give 
our bodies and our systems the things that they need. If we give them the things they need, we can now go forward. We can now exude uh, that uniqueness that we have. And your immune system is the same way. We need to understand that patient that I was telling you about who was taking steroids, he already had the ability to build muscle. He just had to work out and he just had to eat healthy. Doing other things to do the work for him wasn't going to do the work for him. When we come to the immune system, you have to understand that when you're eating the way you're supposed to be eating, when you're breathing the way you're supposed to be eating, when you're getting proper sunlight, uh, when you're drinking clean water, when you're living a natural and whole and clean life, your immune system is going to be operating at 100%. However, when we start to veer away from those natural things, those things that are innate to us, when we start eating processed foods, our immune system, the function, the, opt the, uh, the, the potential of our immune system is going to go down. When we start drinking soda and juices, our immune system is going to start to go down. When we don't get enough sun exposure, vitamin D, our immune system is going to go down. This is called down regulation. Your immune system is now going to be down regulated. When we are stressed out, when we don't get enough sleep, when we're eating six times a day or multiple, multiple times a day, we're going to have a down regulation in the functioning of our immune system. And in order to upregulate it, you stop doing those things and you provide your body with the natural resources that it needs in order to get back to where it's at. But I want you to know there is no if this is 100 and this is what you naturally have, there is no going 110. There is no going 120. That would be considered the boost. That would be considered boosting your immune system, which is not true. You cannot go above what you already have. You cannot go above and beyond uh, your natural abilities. However, if there is something that can make you go above that threshold, I guarantee you it's not practical and it's not sustainable. Same thing with this guy. He was taking something that could possibly boost his potential uh, to make muscle. However, I guarantee, well, I, I don't even have to guarantee it. He has evidence and I, we have plenty of evidence that shows that it's not sustainable and it's not practical. It's not practical to, to inject yourself every day with drugs. Uh, it's not practical to watch your testicles shrink. It's not practical to have a large, uh, your heart size grow uh, bigger than what it should be, which is now going to cause LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy and the stiffening of your arteries and high blood pressure. Like these things are not sustainable. They're not practical. They're dangerous. So if you do find something that can quote unquote boost your natural abilities, boost your immune system. It's not going to be practical. It's not going to be sustainable. The best you can do is understand that you already have what you need inside you. And the best you can do is give your body what it needs. Support your body. Support it. And you get out of the way. And we get out of the way by not doing the unnecessary unhealthy things. Such as the frequent eating, the lack of sleep, um, the processed foods. All those things, they downregulate your immune system. If you want to upregulate your immune system and let it uh, function optimally, stop doing those things. I'm sorry, I'm back. Uh, stop doing those things. Do the natural things, and you will have that upregulation. So, I don't have my list in front of me, but I'm, I'm as always, I'm freestyling right off the dome. Um, but here are a couple of things that you can do upregulate your immune system to get back to where you should already be to get back to where you you naturally already have this like i'm not trying to give you something that you don't already have you already have this step out the way stop eating all the time you're going to get right back to where you need to be now so one thing there's several things but sleep if you are not getting proper sleep now i'm a complete uh hypocrite when it comes to this because I average two to four hours of sleep but I'm willing to take that risk um, so I don't recommend doing that but that just feels natural to me I don't wake up and I don't feel tired um, I wake up early in the morning I'm ready to go I'm ready to fight somebody I'm ready to run through a wall I'm ready to get this work you know but optimally the optimal level uh, amount, amount of sleep for people are about six to eight hours when you don't get enough sleep uh, your body registers that as a form of physical stress and with that form of physical stress, you're also going to have increases in stress hormones such as cortisol. 
Uh, and so when you have that increase in cortisol and uh, also glucose, once that's already a strike or that's already a, a, a strike against upregulating, that's actually downregulating your, your immune system. Uh, eating, when you're eating processed foods, the, the nutritional colonizers, y'all hear me talk about it all the time. When you're constantly eating these foods, uh, the chips, uh, the McDonald's, the KFC, uh, the, the freaking Chinese foods, people who want to even touch your hand and give you the money back. Uh, when you start eating these f foods, you are also going to start downregulating your immune system because these foods, they're not benign. I don't, people call them empty calories. They're not empty. That, that's, that empty calorie is almost like a Trojan horse. Like there's something in there. You, you go to sleep, there's something in there. But uh, you got to remember those foods, not only when they come in your body, not only will they increase your, uh, your glucose, not only will it increase uh, inflammation, but it's also going to strip away the actual nutrients that your body already has in it. Uh, it's going to strip, strip away, it's going to utilize the magnesium because you actually need these nutrients to break down these foods, these highly processed foods. You actually need nutrients to break it down and to deal with it. Uh, and magnesium, calcium, potassium, uh, these are some to use from your own body's bodily foods and make sure things don't get out of hand. So if you're eating foods that don't even have those things in it, like when's the last time you had Chinese food or McDonald's that came equipped with the optimal level of magnesium and potassium and fiber, it, it, that's, that's, that's not happening. Only way you're going to get those things in that combination, the right combination, is from whole foods, plant foods. Uh, however, when you're heavily leaning on to processed foods, those processed foods, they cause problems and then they cause more problems, but actually it's robbing you of your natural resources. And so naturally your body can actually heal and repair itself, but when it actually needs the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium, it actually needs the B12, it actually needs these things to heal and repair yourself. And so when it goes to actually get the, the weapons and the ammunition to try to do what it needs to do or to try to heal itself, have it because it just spent it on breaking down the unhealthy food. So you're really tying your hands behind your back when you're doing that. Uh, not only that, when you're eating the way the American society has told you to do, which is frequent eating every two to three hours, six small meals, you gotta understand when you're doing that, once again, that is extremely unnatural. Um, you're putting yourself in at a, a disadvantage because every time you eat, uh, you are increasing insulin. I don't care if you're trying to do the whole keto. I don't care if you're trying to do uh, whatever else everybody's out here hustling and making money off of. I don't care if you're trying to do those things. What you have to understand is that every time you eat one, you are inhibiting mTOR. And your mTOR is a, uh, a nutrient uh, sensor. And so when that gets inhibited or activated, I'm sorry, inhibited, um, you're actually going to stop autophagy. Autophagy, also people call it autophagy. Uh, this is when the body actually uh, deteriorates and uses and eats. You know, autophagy stands for self-eating. Uh, but this is when the body actually uh, uses the old and worn out parts, the cellular parts, to break it down and to recycle it to create new parts, optimal parts. And so when you don't give your body self, uh, time to do that, you're going to have old and worn out cells sticking around longer than when it needs to be. Like this is that, this is that, that this is that 58 year old guy in the club, uh, the Jordan jersey on and the hat on backwards and the Timberlands and the, and the boots with the page on the clip talking about he's a rapper. Here's my, here's my eight track, you know. Won't you look your boy up on MySpace? Like, that's that guy, right? And so he needs to sit down. Like, it's time for you to just chill and, you know, transition into being a grandfather and a good grandfather. You know, like, spread that wisdom. Um, you shouldn't be out in the club with the, 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 the young heads. Like, just, you know, chill out for a little bit. Or, or let's get you over to a different club. You know what I'm saying? Let's try out bingo, which is dope. So um, you don't want cells like that. The, the 58 year old rapper like you don't need cells like that like let the new cells come in because they have uh, a different you know energy so also when you're eating frequently um you're also going to have uh, a constant influx of insulin and every time you have an increase in insulin one like i said you stop autophagy uh but you're also going to inhibit uh what they call <clears throat> lipolysis lipolysis is the breakdown of fat um, and so, so much for your fat loss. I mean, you may have some, but you're not going to optimize that. 
uh, but also it's not natural for us to exist in an insulin dominant state insulin is a hormone insulin all hormones in general uh, should operate in bursts like you shouldn't have insulin just being secreted all throughout the day and that's what most of us uh, have going on so that right there also insulin is going to uh, stiffen your arteries and make your arteries narrow having the, 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 the concept and the idea that you should be injecting insulin as medication I mean there's so many problems with that but this is a talk about the immune system so that is going to downregulate your immune system so um, the frequent eating don't do we talk about the processed foods also the, the sodas and the juices these things down regulate your immune system um, the same way I told you about with the foods well now you are essentially taking in a liquid form of that food like they're, they're still going to do the same thing they have nothing beneficial for you um, all they're going to do is wreak havoc and then take what you got valuable it's kind of like that I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I'm not gonna go there. I'll go there. It's kind of like that guy that's just sitting on your couch that don't do nothing around the house, that don't even do anything for you, um, and he just taking and taking and taking and taking. My bad, y'all. I couldn't help myself. But um, so the juices and the sodas, stay away from it. Those things downregulate your immune system. Um, also, vitamin D. So I told you, vitamin D is not a vitamin. Vitamin vitamin D is a hormone. When we talk about hormones, the way hormones work is hormones is any substance in the body that is secreted from an organ, uh, directed into the bloodstream, and spreads its, spreads its effects to distant parts of the body. So when we talk about something like thyroid hormone, thyroid right here, but it has effects all over the body. Uh, when we talk about something like uh, testosterone and estrogen, it has its effects all over the body. And so vitamin D works the same way. Vitamin D, uh, yes, it gets converted uh, into the body through the skin, through the liver, and then gets converted and secreted from the actual pink, I mean, uh, the kidneys. And that is a hormone. Once it, it's secreted and activated by the, kidney, the kidneys and then secreted, it's a hormone. And so that hormone, you have to understand that every single cell, essentially, essentially, I'm finding a little, there's, there's, some, there's a little disagreement, but not much. But essentially, every cell in your body has VDRs, what they call VDRs, vitamin D receptors. Uh, vitamin D, vitamin D, hormone D. I'm working on making sure I call it hormone D because that's what it is. And by going along with the game of not calling it by its proper terms, um, it's something that I consider to be nefarious nomenclature. And so nefarious means wicked intentions or wicked action. Uh, nomenclature is a, is a naming system. The same way I consider type 1 versus type 2 diabetes to be nefarious nomenclature because when people hear type 1 and then they hear type 2, they just think that type 2 is a more form of type 1, which it's not. Type 2 is 180 degrees uh, in separation from type 1. People take insulin for type 1. So that leaves somebody who's newly diagnosed or who doesn't know much about type 2 diabetes that, okay, me taking insulin as a type 2 diabetic is okay. However, if I'm telling you that it's 180 degrees difference, um, people who have type 1, their pancreas is not secreting enough or not secreting any insulin whatsoever. Uh, when we go over here to type 2 diabetics, they have insulin. In fact, uh, high insulin levels actually cause the insulin resistance. And so to now think that we should take medications that are going to make your pancreas secrete more insulin or you're just going to straight up inject more insulin people for the most part the masses won't see any problem with that because it's type two like type one is bad type two is bad bad that's the nefarious nomenclature because they shouldn't even be they shouldn't even be called died they both should not have the same similar names they shouldn't it causes too much confusion but i believe that confusion is on purpose so back to vitamin d versus hormone d deficient in a vitamin should fix this vitamin deficiency but the amount of urgency is not going to be there. However, if I tell you that you are deficient in the hormone, it was like, oh, what? Hormone? Like, I'm, I'm low in the hormone? How do I fix this? Like, what do I need to do? What do I need to inject? The impetus, like, you, you're going to move urgently because when we think about hormones, we think about testosterone for men, right? No. What's normal and the same thing with estrogen. 
we move differently when we talk about violence. Let's work on, as a community, let's work on, we don't need nobody else, man. We don't need no other folks out there uh, to sign no petition or anything like that. Let's just go on facts um, and let's start calling it what it is, which is hormone D. And when you're low in hormone D, it's hormone D deficiency. So um, hormone D it is connected to essentially everything. As far as uh, when it's low in the problems that you're going to have, everything from uh, cancer, everything from, you know, of course, bone, bone. Most people know uh, vitamin D for its effects on uh, bone, healthy bones and teeth. Man, that's almost like the lowest priority uh, that vitamin D has. Vitamin D plays a huge role in your immune system. In fact, if you listen and you look and you read these articles, I mean, if you just scroll down my page, uh, you're going to see I'm listing so many articles uh, about COVID-19 and vitamin D deficiency. And what they're finding is that uh, the actual patients that are dying from COVID-19 coronavirus confirmed um, the, the levels of uh, vitamin D deficiency is through the roof. These, the numbers of patients who have this virus and actually died from the virus, um, their levels are their levels are extremely low. And that's one of the common findings that they have. So the idea that you should not go outside and that you shouldn't get sun ex- sun exposure and that you should be wearing uh, sunscreen is deadly. It's detrimental. I mean, to sit up there and just tell folks to wash their hand, wash their hand, wear a mask, and not deal with that other things that are actually going to save you. Because the other things that we're talking about, like that's actually going to save you. Um, the things that we're talking about right now is actually going to keep you healthy and in, 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 in upregulate your immune system and what's caught me slipping uh the other things are just i'll keep my opinion to myself uh as far as that goes but you should work on improving and enhancing something that's actually yours something that you actually work uh with and you walk around with all the time which is your immune system um you know yeah wash your hands please go ahead please wash your hands like these, these are things that we should be doing commonly anyway um, you know, if you're going to wear your mask, all right, cool, wear your mask. But if I see somebody else wearing a mask and bringing it down so they can chew a burger, things don't add up. They don't add up. Wearing a mask and sipping on soda. All right. Okay. I mean, and you see what they're creating, right? Like, I think about the thought process. Think about the thought process. I know some people probably did it and this is not the the wag finger or throw shade but i just i want us to be analytical i want us to be critical with this thing um how do you get on tv day after day and news and all these things and talk about mask and uh you know uh, hand washing and gloves and the conversation about nutrition and avoiding processed foods and getting sunlight is damn near null and void is you slick or is you stupid not y'all but like them those folks so your immune system, you got to understand that just because you're exposed to it, you're supposed to be able to be exposed to essentially anything. And this is for the this is this is not for the older crowd. I'm talking to uh, the, the 50 and younger crowd, uh, but you're supposed to be able to do anything or be exposed to anything and have an immune system that can defend and that can actually protect you and save you and and do what it needs to do. We should not this idea that, you know we can't deal with it i have questions about a lot of those things i have questions about a lot of those things and so i'm not a fan of it i'm not a fan of you know trying to rely on a mask to to make you health healthy and keep you healthy what if you actually get exposed to it your immune system is supposed to take care of all of that and if you have a low functioning immune system or down regulated immune system then this is when you have problems when your immune system does not have the resources uh when your immune system has you know invaders banging on the door and it's like, let me in, let me in. And your immune system is supposed to be the military. Your immune system is supposed to be your defense for the house. And the immune system is locking the doors and is running around trying to find the guns and trying to find, like, the weapons. And it's like, yo, where's the weapons at? And you're like, we gave it away. What do you mean you gave away the weapons? How are we supposed to defend ourselves? Call the cops. And the cops are like, yo, we're not, we're not coming out there because, you know, coronavirus and all that stuff. So we're not coming out there. This is kind of what's happening. And so that those weapons are the fiber, the calcium, the magnesium, the vitamin D. Like these are weapons. 
Like you need these. Your body can fight it off if you have access to these resources. However, when you don't have access to it or when you've been giving it away by eating processed foods, then yeah, you know, your 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 immune system is not about to smoke. Your immune system is not gonna be able to defend you. And you yeah, you should, you know, then I, I understand wearing the mask. Um however, it's not practical, it's not sustainable. How long are you gonna do that? So, anyways, I don't wanna go too far into that talk, but I'm saying that to say this. Vitamin D is extremely important. If you're low in vitamin D, you are playing at extreme uh, disadvantage. We need vitamin D. Vitamin D is a hormone. Let me stop saying vitamin D. I'm working on saying hormone. Uh, hormone D, you're at extreme disadvantage, all right? Uh, next, fasting. Come on now. You know I was going to get off here. We're talking about fasting. Fasting is everything. Uh, fasting is my gospel. Uh, matter of fact, we are the last week of our uh, fast life challenge. But you have to understand, I'm, I talked about insulin, I talked about autophagy. Um, you have to understand that your body is self-healing, self-regulating, and self-repairing. However, we have to give our, bo- our bodies, there's two parts. We have to give our bodies the resources to do the self-healing, self-regulating, and self-repairing. You got to give it the resources. The resources come from the sunlight, the, uh, the vitamin D, uh, but also the whole foods. The whole foods that has the magnesium, the calcium, uh, the fiber, uh, those. The second part of it is the healing and repairing. You have to step out the way. And the stepping out of the way is fasting. Like, move. If you are constantly eating, then you're not doing any moving. Uh, you're just getting in the way. And so there's, you're not going to have an optimal level of healing when it comes to you know these conditions, these quote-unquote diseases. So fasting is important. Uh, movement is important. Exercise is important. We're not designed to be stagnant all day long. We're not designed to be sitting. Body needs movement. So please get outside. I don't care if you're just walking around the block because just walking around the block is not just walking around the block. Uh, That serves several purposes. You know, one, you're exercising, but also two, if you're not walking around the block, listening to news or complaining with your friends and, you know, uh, any any kind of like, you know, just depressing or stressing things, then it can actually be therapeutic. So y'all should really... Uh, try that out. Um, next, what did I say? Somebody taking a list? Um, fasting, exercise, water. We need water. Our, our bodies, you know, planet Earth is 70% water. Our body is 70% water. Uh, the, the, the makeup of a cell is about 70, 60-70% water. Uh, there's a pattern. You can't ignore that pattern. We need water. Uh, many of us are at least mildly dehydrated. We, we need that water, okay? So, push out of the juices and the sodas and drink water or you know a lot of water and herbal tea as well too what else we talked about whole foods we talked about uh fasting we talked about exercise we talked about hormone d from the sun from the sunlight oh your thoughts come on come on many people unfortunately uh what we've been doing this whole quarantine lockdown thing for about like two months now so people have been out of work right people have been home and unfortunately, what's going to happen for a lot of people is when they do finally decide to open up, you know, if we do, I'm joking, if we do, um, when, when that finally does happen, what you're going to have is a bunch of people going back to work saying, man, I need a break. I need a vacation. Reason being is because right now so many people are sitting home glued to the news, uh, glued to social media, glued to uh, essentially uh, neurocinematic trauma. So many people are just glued to that and they are being stressed out on a daily basis. They're being stressed out on an hourly basis. Uh, they're waiting for the, the latest uh, update. They're waiting for the latest uh, craziest thing that was said in, in media or the news. They're waiting for the latest conflict. And we're just sitting and we're watching and we're being entertained and stressed out, entertained and stressed out, entertained and stressed out. Liking, sharing, posting, liking, sharing, posting. And even though you're home, even though you're sitting, even though you're not actually doing work, this is this is draining for the brain. Like this is draining for the psyche as hell. And so, unfortunately, when this whole thing is over and we go back to work, a lot of people are going to be like, "Yeah, I need a break. I need a vacation." So what I'm saying is that, yo, unplug, get away, turn it off, stop it, stop it, leave it alone. It's not. It's not even that important. And most of the time, it's not even real. It's not even real news. Not to sound like your boy, but it's not even real news. A lot of shit is fake, for real. And so you got to get away from it. You got to unplug it. And you should really be um, 
goal goal oriented. You know, like while you're home for these next however long, build something, create something, achieve something, do something. Because that achievement, that goal, that something, no matter how quote unquote small you think it is, it's going to build up. But also that helps you tap into your 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 purpose, your your reason. Because truth be told, I mean, I think if a lot of people were to be honest, they don't really ever think about their purpose. They don't ever really think about, you know, the idea that they do have a purpose or they do have a mission. A lot of people don't think about it. And I mean, I'm, I was definitely guilty about that. But I tell you what, the moment I started to think about the idea of purpose and the moment I gave myself a purpose and a mission, you know, your boy moved different, completely different. And so you can see somebody told me, like, you can see it in my walk. Like, you look like you're ready to go fight somebody. I'm like, well, maybe I should kind of, you know, alter that because I don't. But yeah, so um, purpose, you know, get away because we spend so much time in other people's business and then we start taking on their business and then we completely ignore our business. Like our business goes out of business because nobody's there to run it and we're all about, you know, their business. So please, your mindset, you know, um, just watching uh, videos that are traumatizing and videos that are just stressing you out, you got to get away from that because that also down regulates your immune system uh, via cortisol and via the, the stress hormones that are coming from your adrenal glands. So get away from it. All right. So maybe somebody can uh, make a list of everything I said because I'm freestyling. I don't have a, uh, have an actual list, but I'll try to do a quick recap. Um, how to upregulate your immune system. There is no boosting your immune system. Uh, you have a potential in a 100%. From there, it's down. It's not up. From there, it's down. So when you start eating processed foods, you downregulate it. When you don't get enough sleep, you downregulate it. When you eat frequently, you downregulate it. When you're eating juice, I mean, you're drinking juice and soda, you downregulate it. When you don't exercise, you downregulate it. When you don't get sunlight, vitamin D, you down, hormone D, you downregulate it. These are the things that you do to actually downregulate it. How do you upregulate it? Stop doing those things. Eat whole foods, you upregulate it. Get sunshine, you upregulate it. Uh, fast, you upregulate it. Water, you upregulate it. And mind you, if you think about everything I'm saying, you're going to say to yourself, like, this is the same stuff that he's always saying. You are absolutely 1,000% correct. And you're also going to say, all these things are actually free. You are 1,000% correct. These folks have done a, quite quite the job on us. Quite the job. So I'm a, I'm a proponent of making sure we understand how this all happened and and who or what is responsible for it but i'm also a huge fan it's the only way i'm gonna do it is you know who's responsible for fixing it and that's us that's me um for myself for my family but us as a community because you can't expect the same ones that caused it to now fix it like i never trust that method i never trust that strategy um now the last thing that i want to talk about that i didn't speak on um but it's important as well is I, I would almost consider this to be I would consider this to be the most important. So during the times of when our ancestors were enslaved, um, they said that the black mother or the black grandmother was consistently the oldest living woman in the country. In about 110, like, and that was not, that was not uncommon. We're talking about old, older black women living up into like their late 90s. Early 100s, 105, 110. And I was reading uh, the psychologist talking about this. And her stance was, and I fully agree with it, is that although life was enslavement, like you're talking, you were being you were enslaved, and there was so much heartache and pain, but the, the, the community, the family, like everybody being in that one house and right next door to each other even though with everything else going on the the terrorism the trauma uh the extreme measures that were being taken against us the family unit being right there they the psychologist was talking about how it did so much as far as uh giving the grandmother hope and giving the grandmother vision because that was her thing you know um hoping for our her children her grandchildren to see a brighter day and trying to be around for that and trying to pass on, you know, these these tools and these uh, tips and strategies uh, for her family. And 
they were saying that that was a huge reason. The community, the, the love, uh, the family, that's all we got. That's all we have. We got to be here for it. That was a that played a huge role. Hope played a huge role as far as uh, these women living so long. And so I'm saying that because I want to say this is that right now, you know, social distancing is a mother freaker, right? Um, because it is completely the opposite of what I recommend, which is family. Like I recommend, recommend family. I recommend family gatherings, of course, not during this time, but in general, um, you know, say word like you feel different when you're around family and there's no drama and you're just laughing and you know you're just cracking jokes and every you're finding out who's doing what and what they doing now and who done broke up with who and oh the she done got so big man look at her you remember when you used to do this man i used to change your diaper like that's different man that's that's different of course you're gonna have your issues and your, your, your you know your, your drama but even those issues and drama are completely different from getting shot while jogging you think so when we're talking about the family unit the community the closeness the belonging these things i feel uh speak volumes i don't i don't i, I don't like putting these things in order but it is up there community the community is up there as far as how important it is uh to our overall health wellness and survival all right so um that's essentially what i want to talk about in addition to that, uh, we we just launched our new vitamin supplement. Uh, vitamin is hormone, but I'm saying vitamin for everybody can understand. Uh, vitamin D3, K2. Uh, we just launched that on Thursday. And um, I am so proud of this supplement. I'm so proud of this vitamin D3, uh, K2 uh, with bioprene. It also has calcium as well, too. Um, there's so many, so many benefits. When you click on the link that's in the description that I have right here, it's going to take you over to the page um, and read the benefits, read the benefits of proper amounts of vitamin D3. Now, granted, my number one recommendation for vitamin D will always be sunlight, 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 sunlight. Y'all heard me talking about sunlight for years now. Um, but with this whole coronavirus and me seeing the, re the seeing the actual data as far as how we're being affected and how uh, so most of these patients, the majority of patients, the overwhelming large amount of these patients were vitamin D deficient. I was like, all right, we got to do it, but we got to do it the right way and we have to do it in the right amount and we have to do it in the right combination. And so people have to understand that I'm not a fan of these doctors slamming people with uh, 50,000 IUs of vitamin D at one time. I, I know it's common. I know they do it. Um, but I don't agree with it because I I question that that mindset and that that aggressiveness as far as yo if we're gonna, we're going to treat the deficiency let's go all the way in let's do it all at one time the body doesn't work like that you know we have levels we have things that go increase gradually and so um, you know when it comes to vitamin D three so I'm just going to answer some questions that people have been asking throughout the day um, on the, my post about vitamin D three. Uh, when it comes to vitamin D3 versus vitamin D2, uh, vitamin D2 used to be very, uh, what used to be pretty common at one point as far as being prescribed. Uh, but vitamin D3 has been found to have a higher, more, higher amount of uh, absorption. Um, and so when uh, and vitamin D2 was found to have a lower amount of absorption as well, uh, vitamin D2 naturally comes from plant foods. Vitamin D3 naturally comes from sunlight. Uh, you know, sunlight, your skin converts it, the skin puts it in the blood, your skin sends it to your liver, uh, your liver converts it, your liver sends it to your kidneys, and then your kidneys activate it and turns it into a hormone. And then that hormone takes action throughout your body. Uh, and essentially every single cell in your body is utilizing uh, that vitamin D, that hormone D. So <clears throat> that process uh, does not take place if you don't have the optimal levels of vitamin vitamin D, hormone D. Um, but in addition to with that, when people are given taking these high amounts of vitamin D and there is no K2, uh, what they found is that uh, a high amount of this vitamin D is increasing the amounts of calcium, which is fine. However, when you don't have the proper amount of K2 to balance that, a lot of that calcium starts to get, starts to get deposited into the actual arteries, the blood vessels, which starts to cause blockages um and also that high amount of calcium uh, you know we're gonna you're gonna start seeing uh another way when you when you're talking about finding out who's vitamin d uh deficient 
hold on, let me let me finish this. To make sure that the calcium goes to where it needs to go and that the vitamin goes to where it needs to go, uh, vitamin D goes to where it needs to go, which is in the bone. And so taking vitamin D3 by itself is not enough. Uh, but also with our vitamin uh, D3 that we have, uh, we also have uh, bioprene in there as well. Uh, bioprene as well, and that's a pepper, and that also helps out with the absorption to make sure that you absorb what you're taking in. And that's another thing that I question with people who take uh, high amounts of vitamin D3, like 50,000 units. I question the body's ability to absorb that much in that fast, that one dosage. I question that. Um, I don't think it is. And so what I know from my own clinical practice, my own clinical experience, six years of doing this and looking at things very differently from the, the rest of the medical community or majority of medical community is that uh, dosages such as 1,000 to 5,000, in some cases 10,000 international units actually grants patients the results that they're looking for uh, while also increasing the, uh, the actual labs, the lab values. Uh, that's another thing, you know, I recommend people get checked for vitamin D, uh, their vitamin D levels. Um, all my patients, for the majority, majority, most of my patients get their vitamin D levels checked. I don't care really what they're coming in for. It doesn't matter. Um, I always recommend uh, they get their vitamin D levels checked. And um, and I don't have any patients. I, I haven't had any patients that came back at an optimal level. I haven't. Now, yesterday, we just uh, had our second lowest value um, of eight she had eight and also what i consider to be optimal and people who have the book they they saw this in the book my dumb with diabetes book let me turn the light on uh optimal levels of, vit of vitamin d is not 20 it's not 30 and i know you're going to see 30 on the lab uh but the optimal level of vitamin d and i'm going to get more into the, this in the coming days is at least 50 but i prefer to see 60 and i know people are probably thinking that's that's extremely high. That's that's impossible. But I will be showing you a couple of things um, in the next couple of days as far as why that needs to be the case, <clears throat> and um, how you can also make sure you get there. And sunlight is an extremely uh, important part of that as well. So we have right now. We are uh, we have like two days left for the sale that we have. Uh, you can everybody can save up to twenty two percent on three bottles. Uh, there's sixty capsules. Uh, like I said, I'm extremely proud of this supplement. I'm, I'm proud of all my supplements, uh, all my, my products that I have. But this one, the way this one came to be about, and I mean, to write about vitamin D was nothing. To write about it was nothing because I, I studied it so much, you know, to the point, where, like I said, where I'm not, it's not even a vitamin, it's a hormone. So um, if you want to check that out, the link is in the subscription. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, we get these out to people pretty quickly because... Once again, we understand that the need and the urgency is there. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to buy some not just for yourself, but also for your whole entire squad, your whole gang, your whole family, your whole congregation, you know, everybody. Because trust me, people need it. People need it. But more importantly, more importantly than my supplement is that you get out into that sunlight. You need to get outside. You need to get fresh air. Do it. All right. Just do it. Um, let me read these comments. What's going on, everybody? What is going on? All right, all right, all right. So Imani, yo, I appreciate that, Imani. Thank you for the support. Uh, Tessie says, greeting from China. It's morning here. Oh, what's up? Greetings. Um, somebody's saying, me too. Um, LB Sav says, I need this day. I'm a nurse that's pretty stressed out. Mm, I went to working, work, work, working out four to five days a week. My diet has been trash. Yeah. And you physically feel, yeah, so that's happening to a lot of people right now, Saf, LB. Uh, it's happening to a lot of people right now. And, you know, the the recipe, the ingredients, the ingredients for that is all right there. You know, if you add in the fact that the TV and the social media and the news and all those things are right there, you're staying in the house, uh, people aren't going outside, uh, you have a pantry with a lot of food in there uh, that's non-perishable, processed foods, you know, and, and you're stressed out. Most a lot of people are depressed. Um, you're worried about the bills. You got bill collectors trying to bully people to pay. Uh, you know your rent, your mortgage. There's a lot going on. You don't know if you're gonna make the work. You haven't seen a check in almost a month. Uh, the stimulus, forget about it. Where is it? When? Where is that at? A lot of people got it, I guess now. But um, so there's a lot going on. The ingredients, the environment, the recipe is like right there. It's already set up. 
And um, you're right. A lot of people are feeling exactly the way you feel, you know, because they go to self-medicating because the processed foods is actually a form of the self-medication. That's why they call it comfort foods. But uh, it is the, the, the worst form because it's addictive. It makes you feel good. It comforts you in the moment, but it comes with some extreme uh, effects to it when done for a long period of time. What's going on? What's going on? So, 45 hours of time shift. Yeah, so um, we all have a circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is essentially our natural internal clocks. Um, and um, when we don't go to sleep based on when we actually start to feel tired, but healthy uh, sleep hygiene as well, too. Sleep hygiene means that, uh, you know, you're not exposed to blue light. Um, also, you're, you're turning down the lights in your house. Uh, you're not eating after 6 p.m. You know, all these things uh, help you get to your, your regular sleep cycle. And you start to notice that you feel sleepy at a certain time. And um, most of us don't have that, and including myself. I'm definitely guilty of that because I'm, I'm up. I'm up long, long through the night. So, um, yeah, so, you know, shift work, mid-shift in the uh, military. So we used to go to work. I used to go in uh, to the aircraft at 10 and got off like, what, 6, 7? So, I mean, it was always, you know, like we just, when I slept, I wasn't even sleeping back then because I had two more jobs, two more part-time jobs. Your boy was a hustler, still is. So, um, Tessie says, these days I have sleep disorder for almost a week. I don't know how to adjust it. Uh, sleep disorder. So, once again, sleep disorder, um, I'm not an expert on that, but I, I just, I'll offer some tips. Stop eating at 6 p.m. Don't have anything to eat after that. Um, your coffee, caffeine, you know, you're going to need to decrease all of that throughout the day. Um, also, your cell phones. Your understand it's your blue lights. Uh, these lights have some, uh, have a, a, a lighting or color to it that's very likened to morning. And so it throws your body off. It throws off your circadian rhythm. And so you need to have absolutely no blue lights um, after, you know, the time of 6 p.m. Um, also, you know, start turning off actual lights. Um, stop, you know, reading or looking at things that are going to get you stressed out and overly stimulated as far as your mental mind goes. Um, now, some people do recommend reading books, um, you know, at night until you fall asleep. I don't know. I haven't really tried that on purpose. I mean, I've done it, but not on purpose. However, just try those things. I'm not a sleep expert, but I would say try those things. All right, Tessie. All right. Um, let's see. My lucinopril cost just went up $40 with the charge of insurance. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a good bit. Angel says you should talk about getting that changed. My doctor said it's not good for people of color, even after 10 years of taking it. Angel, what you talking about? Angel Melton. What are you referring to, Angel? I should get that changed. Uh, Gabriel says, uh, what about health bars and meal replacement shakes? I mean, it's still processed. It's not a. It's not an actual whole food. It, it's, I still prefer, of course, I still prefer you actually get real whole foods because uh, one of the things that you, you're not going to get from processed foods, there's multiple things, but also you can't ignore the enzymes. Enzymes is a part of the conversation that does not get spoken about at all uh, because the the amount because if you start talking about enzymes, people are going to start realizing that, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Oh, snap. Um, this food that I'm eating, this kale, this spinach is actually alive. And the enzymes from this kale is actually going to the food that I'm taking in is actually going to help break down a decent amount of the food I'm actually taking in is actually going to make things better for me. And I'm actually going to actually be able to utilize uh, those enzymes. And so the enzymes, the fibers, uh, the nutrients, the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium, there's so many things. Now, of course, you know, your health bar and your meal replacement shake is going to be a thousand times better than uh, the McDonald's and the Chinese food. So, yeah, if you have to choose between those two, you know, then do those. Uh, LB Sav says, I learned the hard way that I can't take lisinopril. Yeah, so I always say this, you know, I don't know why. Um, I do know why, but I, I'm, I scratch my head whenever I hear about African-Americans or people of African descent taking lisinopril when we have so much evidence showing that we don't do well with that medication as a whole, let alone the medication doesn't work. Like, let's push that aside. But 
when you hear about side effects um, from lisinopril, you can you can damn near like just put your hand in the bucket and it'll be a, an African American person or someone who's of African descent. Um, those side effects can be something like a dry cough, chronically. You're always coughing. You don't know why. Nothing's producing. Um, but then the notorious one is the angioedema. This is like the swelling of the lips, the swelling of the tongue. Um, and this has happened to people, uh, you know, close to me, my family, seeing that happen as well, too. And so, yeah, you're right. That is the hard way because it's scary as hell to have your throat close up. And then, you know, the best you can do is be sent to the emergency room and hope that nothing else happens. And so it happens time at the time at the time again. It happens a lot for doctors and PAs and nurse practitioners for healthcare to still be prescribing this medication that this side effect happens so much it just makes me scratch my head but not really so um morning morning I guess you're in China too yo Clover what's going on yeah it has been a while Judy what's going on Judy uh Brazil you're not saying nothing please don't say anything I don't know um, what's going on? What's going on? All right. So Lauren says, exactly. I wondered about the massive dosage I was previously prescribed and what I could do to increase the absorption consistently. My doctor had no answers other than to say it was standard protocol. Yeah. So the hustle is already baked in the protocols. Uh, this keeps the actual people, you know, how like cops come up. Well, I don't know if you all know, but you know, when cops come up and they're like trying to pass you down or they're trying to like look in your car. They're trying to like say something. And you're like, yo, like, what's going on? I'm doing my job. So what they're doing is they're hiding behind the guidelines, the protocols. Like, they're hiding behind the protocols, whether they know it or not. The same thing happens on health health uh, healthcare. Um, many of the, the nurse practitioners, the PAs, uh, the doctors, whether they know it or not, they're hiding behind protocols because they can simply say, I don't really know if this works. I honestly really don't agree with it, but... It is protocol, and um, if I want to stay away from malpractice, I need to practice via based on this protocol. And so um, you're right. The I don't agree with that massive uh, dosages doses at one time from an actual supplement. Now, can you get that amount from the sunshine? Yeah, but guess what? Your skin is going to regulate how much of that is actually absorbed, and your your liver and your kidney is actually going to regulate how much of that is going to be utilized versus actually uh, wasted or stored. So. Yeah, I question all that. What's going on, Irish? Christy, what's going on? Nisi, thank you. How good is vitamin C on the body? Uh, yeah, so vitamin C is good. Um, you know, vitamin C is relatively easy to get from food. Uh, vitamin C, uh, zinc is... So all these things are in food. All these things are in food. So the only reason why I don't speak about uh, a lot of these other vitamins and uh, nutrients and minerals is because they are easily easy to get from food. Vitamin D is not. Hormone D is not easy to get from food. Um, but it's easy in theory to get from the sun. You just got to be out there. How many people are going to be out in the sun for, you know, more than an hour? Not many people. Uh, also for those who are concerned with, uh, sunburns or, you know, uh, getting irritated by the sun. Don't, I don't recommend using sunblock or anything like that. If you want to put something on, cause you weren't, you're concerned about it. Use coconut oil or shea butter. I, I don't recommend the sunscreens or anything like that. I don't, I don't recommend them. And um, that's because I have a lot of questions about them as far as the safety. Um, and as far as, you know, their cancer numbers, like, isn't that a trip? Like you're wearing something to prevent cancer and you're finding out that it actually might cause cancer. But that's how these folks work. So um, Keisha, hey, Edward, I'm taking vitamin D3, 1000 milligrams. All right, good, good, good. How much vitamin C does my body need in a day? Hmm. I don't know the actual doses, the recommend, recommended daily allowance. And let me tell you something about these recommended daily allowances. I'm finding out as I'm like looking through them because I just had to read a whole lot uh, the past. I don't agree with them, uh, agree with a lot of them. And if you look at a lot of countries, like uh, I think in Finland, when you look at a lot of countries, like specifically about vitamin D, when you look at their minimum uh, recommended daily allowance versus ours in a lot of these areas, it's low as hell. Like at one point, I don't know what, it, I can't remember what it is now, um, but in Finland, their their recommended dosage was 2,000 units per day. And at that time in America, for infants, it was 200. 
I mean, you're talking about a huge difference. And so, um, yeah, you know, I, that's why I'm, I tend to kind of make sure I go outside of America as far as getting a lot of information and, you know, convert it and bring it back and do some alchemy and then make it specific to us because, um, you know, these folks, they're always up to something. So, Kita, what's going on? Appreciate you, bro. Love, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Judy, what's going on? Up north during the winter, my levels were low. Oh, okay. Calcium plus D3 and my levels were checked. Good, 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 Judy, good. Uh, Ty, what's going on? What's going on, Bonanza? I got a busy lifestyle, and this includes studying. What type of vitamins to keep my brain alert watching from... So let me tell you what's going to keep your brain alert. And this is not me theorizing. This is actually from experience. But fasting. I know my answer seems to be fasting for a lot of things. But let me tell you what, man. So this is coming from a guy who, when I graduated high school, I felt like high school was not even really a challenge. Like I was just there for the girls. And I mean, even when I went to college, I was just there for the girls. Uh, well, hold on. Let me check that timeline. I was not there for the girls. Um, so, um, but when I was, uh, school was whatever, but when I got done with school and I went to the military, I vowed never to open up a book again. Like I vowed never to read a book again. Like I, I just hated it. Like I didn't want to read anything. I was done with education. I was done with it all. I was like, I'm done. Um, and I remember one day when I was in the military, um, I had a roommate, um, we were living off base and like, you're talking about going out to party. Like we were always partying. Like who you know goes to the club on a Monday night? This guy. <laughs> and so, like, we were always partying, always going out, right? And um, he goes and messes it up because one day I come home and I see, like, these stack of books on the table. And I'm like, what is this? Mathematics? Biology? And he walks in the door and it was funny as hell because it was like a father who found drugs in his son's drawer. And he, he walked in the house. I'm like, yeah. yo what is this he's like books i'm like books what are you doing with books he's like i'm going back to school it's like why would you do that he's like so i can better myself so i can learn and you should do the same thing i was like out get out <laughs> so a real ignorant moment for me and he won't let me uh, forget about that moment uh, man, i'm i'm thankful that he won't but um I really didn't want to do anything, anything with books or education or anything like that. Fast forward to college, I really wanted to play football for the University of South Florida. I did six years in the military, the Air Force, um, and my whole thing from like as a child was to play football. So I believed that I was destined to be a football player. And um, parents, we gotta, we have to really challenge our children uh, with that that idea and that love and that obsession for sports. It's very good to build skills and very good to build. Uh, work that ethic but to identify as a football player and if that doesn't happen to be crushed and feel like you don't really have a purpose we have to really address that but let's go back over here so my destiny my goal was to uh, play football and um so in the military the whole time you know i was like training and running and doing all these things um got out the military i moved to tampa and i was trying to go to the university of south florida well lo and behold in order to get into a college, Division One college, really any college at all, you need these things called credits. I was like, credit? Like, what you want to check my score for, bro? Like, <laughs> it ain't good. But um, I didn't know anything about college credits, right? And so they essentially laughed at me. They were like, yeah, you have to, um, if you want to come here, you have to either have a certain score on whatever the test was, or you have to have a college credit, I mean, a community college credit, associate's degree, and then we can talk about enrolling you. I was like, I just want to play ball. Like, what I got to do to get on the football team? It was like, yeah, you got to do more than that. And so I was like, all right, that can't be true. I can walk on to the football team, and then I can come to the, the school. And so me and a friend, a close friend at that time, uh, we, we snuck into the actual athletic building. So the University of South Florida has a pretty nice campus. Um, and they have this, uh, this football facility, well, athletic facility. It's pretty big, real dope, but it has a lot of security. And um, I had to look. Like, I looked like an athlete. And so we snuck inside there, <clears throat> and then uh, the football players were actually in the middle of a workout in the, the, their gym. And um, we bust up in the gym. And the coaches all looking back, the strength and conditioning coaches and the head coach at the time, Jim Levitt, 
and the uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, ah, I forgot his name. Anyways, they look back and they're like, oh, 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 can we help you? Can we help you? Because they knew I was in the play. They were like, can we help you? Can we help you? I was like, yeah, I want to play football. And they was like, all right, um, do you go here? Like, are you, I was like, nah, I don't go here yet. It's like, okay, you're going to come here next season or like, what's, what's going on? I was like, no. That's like, they were like, how'd you get here? I was like, I just came in. I was like, look, I'm the best thing smoking in Florida. You need me on your team. If you want to win, you need me on your team. Now, mind you, this team was number two in the country at the time. University of South Florida uh, back in 2007 or eight, they were number two. They were ranked number two. But you couldn't tell me nothing. Like, I was extremely convinced. And the guy with me was even crazier, and he was even more convinced. And so they're like, what? You want to be on the team? Like, you're, you're the best thing. And I'm saying this in front of all these players. These players done dropped the weights, and they're looking, and they're laughing. They're like, yo, who does do this? I'm like, yo, they laughing now, but trust me, you need me on this team. I was like, you want to win? You need me on the team. They were like, all right, like, do you have a degree? Like, how are you going to get here? Like, what are you talking about? And so my friend was like, nah, he doesn't have a degree yet, but, you know, he wants to walk on. Can he just walk on? It was like, nah, you got to be a student. You have to be enrolled uh, full-time or was it part-time, but you got to be enrolled to actually go to the school. And I was like, I'm not enrolled. It was like, well, do you have a degree? I was like, no, I don't have a degree. I was like, what I what we have to do to get a degree? They was like, well, you can go to the community college and get your associate's degree. I was like, okay, then I'll do that. How long did that take? They was like, two years. It's like, do you know anything? I was like, no. I was like, two years. I was like, yo, how about this? If I can get back here before tryouts, which was in about eight months, if I can get back here before tryouts, you give me a shot? He was like, it's a two-year degree. I was like, will you give me a shot? And he was like, yes. If you can get back into school and enroll with no credits and get to the tryouts, yo, we will definitely give you a shot. That was the head coach. The strength and conditioning coach was like, he he believed. He like, for whatever reason, this guy didn't know me, but he like, yo, all right. So long, now I had to go down to uh, the community college, Hillsborough Community College. Um, no idea about school. So I'm like, I want to roll. Let me into the college. They were like, whoa, hold on. There's levels to this. You got to do this. You got to do that. I'm like, all right, let's get all paperwork done. We get to, we get to the, the part where I have to choose classes. And I'm like, I need to choose how many are each, how many of these credits? And it was like, each class is three credits. I was like, I need 60. It was like, okay, cool. But you got to break it up into to 12 credits per semester. I was like, no, 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 no. I need 60 credits right now so I can get to the tryouts. Yo, this lady laughed at me. She was like, oh, sweetie, oh, bless your heart. It don't work like that. She was like, you have to take 12 credits or maybe 15 credits per semester and then continue to work your way up. And I was like, that's going to take forever. I was like, why would I do that? She was like, that's just how it works. I was like, is there anything I can do where I could take more credits? She was like, how many credits do you want to take? I was like, what is the max? And she was like, well, you can take, she's like, well, I got a better plan. She's like, well, you can do 15 credits, but you can also do these things called CLEP exams. So I'm like, what's a CLEP? CLEP is pretty much where you take, you, you convince, you tell yourself that you know a subject so much that you can take one test that will test you on the general, uh, the general, the general topic of that class. And if you pass it, they'll give you the credits. You won't get the grade, but you get the credits. I was like, all right, where are those at? And she was like, well, here's a list that we offer. I was like, okay, let me look at this. I was like, math, I can do that. Soci uh, sociology, I can do that. History, it's all a lie. I can do that. So I'm like, yo, I can do these classes right here. So 15 credits. And she was like, well, now you got to do um, 45. I was like, how about this? I'll do 30 credits for this semester and then the other 15 I'll do in the summer that way I can go right into University of South Florida she was like you're not going to do 30 credits I was like all right listen am I able to sign up for 30 credits she was like take the clip first so I went off I studied my ass off and mind you because I'm so busy and I'm so focused I'm not eating like I, I'm eating 
but not in the morning. And I'm not eating late at night. I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm just doing it because I'm focused. And so um, I'm flipping through these book books and I'm just absorbing the information. Uh, long story short with this part, I took those those exams. Uh, there were five exams and I passed them all. So I had 15 credits, my first 15 credits. Um, that was November and that was December. Now roll around to January. Uh, well, before January, I tell the lady again, I go back. I'm like, yo, I need to sign up for 30 credits because that way I can do these 15 credits during the summer. She was like, sweetie, you can't do 30 credits. I was like, I need to do it. She was like, all right, look, if you can do it, but the dean has to sign off on it. And I was like, all right, cool. Where's she at? And she gave me this letter and I had to like sign this thing and everything like that. Um, and I had to go over to the dean's building and I had to go upstairs and I was like, yo, Dean, I got an appointment with you. What's good? And she was like, yeah, so I heard about you. So now everybody knows who I am. I'm the crazy guy running around Tampa. Well, actually riding around Tampa on the bike, thinking that I'm going to play football by getting my associate's degree in six months. Right. That's me. And so um, I go to the dean's office and she was like, yeah, I heard about you. X, Y, Z. And she was like, do you know how much this is going to cost? I'm like, no. What do you mean? How much is it going to cost? She was like. 30 credits. This is going to cost you a lot of money. I'm like, how much money? And she told me how much. Long story short, your boy had to sell his car and um, a couple other things. Like, you know, nothing legal, nothing legal. But I had to really get my hustle on because I had to do it. So she signed it and she signed it and she said, good luck. And I went back over to the uh, the other the administration area and uh, there were already a group of women who had like a very familiar feel like they were like family because i was in there so much so many times and they were like did she sign it i was like yeah she signed it it was like oh my goodness it was like yo y'all this boy is about to this young man is about to do try to do 30 credits these women lay their hands on me it was a group of black women they, they lay their hands on me and they was like let's pray for this young man he has goals and he has dreams we hope they come like i mean they just pour some blessing on me and um 30 credits later not only did i past those credits but actually got i was on the dean's list so i mean like that was a huge thing apparently i set the record in florida for uh the fastest because i went ahead and i did the 15 credits during the summer and i got that too um i set the record in florida here and right here in florida i have the record for the fastest to accomplish an associate's degree um I, i'm tied for the most credits at one time which is 30 30 i believe and um and yeah, I did. I attribute that all. I attribute. I attribute that a lot of that to uh, fasting. Of course, everything else was just my goals and my determination. But <clears throat> it was interesting. But how clear I felt, and also just my ability to retain information. I remember that when I started, because I actually played football for them for two years. I played football for the University of South Florida for two years. But when I got to PA school, like things were different, right? Like you're talking about a whole different level of study. And, um, you know, when we first got to PA school, I was, there's only two black males in the class, right? And then there were four black females, right? And uh, while they're doing their talk and the orientation and they looked around, it was like, yes. And um, it will be a good idea not to have any babies while you're in school because the work is so demanding. It's like trying to drink water out of a fire hydrant. I was like, why homie looking at me? <laughs> and um, lo and behold, two kids while I was in school, right? Two. Now I got a total of three. And so um, studying was intense. But I remembered about my idea, my theory about, you know, fasting and everything like that. And so the way I really found out that fasting worked for me when it came time to um, study and retain information because, you know, I had a family and I had young kids and, you know, one of my, my young, my boy, my, my second, old, my oldest boy, he had an issue with sleep and he wasn't sleeping. Um, you know, we were just stressed out as, as a household, as a family, as a unit. And so a lot of my time was spent with the family and not really studying. And then these tests were coming up and I was actually failing a lot of these exams, you know, not, not a lot, but a decent amount or I was getting like borderline grades. And it got to the point where they actually had to pull me to the office and it was like, yo, you are about to flunk out. You know, you're barely making it right now. You know, you need to get a tutor. You know, you need you need additional help. And I was like, 
I done put so much money and so much time into this thing. I can't just flunk out. Like, we got to make this happen. And um, and that's when I purposely went to fasting. I purposely went to fasting. Not only did I go to fasting, but I went to, like, studying in very uncomfortable environments because I wanted to try to, you know, weird stuff. But um, I started fasting. Anytime I had, like, a huge exam, I'm fasting for two to three days. Like, two to three days of no food whatsoever, just water. And I'm telling you, it's like the amount of information I was able to go through, but also retain and also digest, understand, and then put back out. It honestly felt like I was cheating. Like, and I'll say this all the time. I remember vividly taking these exams, especially on my actual, uh, my state exam, my board exam. I remember taking these exams and in my head, I could see the picture. I could see the diagram. I can see the heart. I can see the, the vessels. I can see the arteries. I can see everything in my head. I can see the lines. I can I can see it all. And I'm like, shit. And so I would I got I would get done with these exams, um, you know, quicker than everybody. So, anyways, long story short, I know it was a long divergent, uh, but um, fasting for memory retention and fasting for um, absorbing information and dissecting information. And it's something that I still do right now, you know, and that's why I'm the crazy guy that's yelling, you know, high blood pressure is not a disease, type 2 diabetes, preventable, reversible, and vitamin D is not a vitamin, it's a hormone. Because uh, I studied this stuff to a very annoying level sometimes. But anyways, I got to go, y'all. It's 837. Um, Iris says, we're walking every day, just wondering, my glucose before dinner is averaging... Uh, 128 before dinner. Yeah, it's going in the right direction, Irish. Yeah, it's going in the right direction because I remember what you told me your numbers were before. You're doing great, Irish. Keep it up. Keep it up. What is the longest that you recommend someone fast? I'm in a three day fast of five fast right now. So, as long as you're healthy, as long as you, um, you got to monitor yourself, right? You know, I don't know if you, you're diabetic or not, if you have any other health conditions, but you have to monitor yourself. You have to constantly be checking in on yourself. How do you feel? Um, and don't push it because guess what? To break a fast is easy. Like you can just break a fast just like that. To start a fast is easy as well too. Just don't eat within the next hour and get that fast started. So you can always come back to fight, but you don't want to have a negative association with fasting um, because you went to fast and you had something happen or you know you just think of negative thoughts when you think of fasting so um five day fast i've done a five day fast i believe the longest i've done right now is six or seven i can't remember um but you know i'm fine with extended day fast just make sure that you are monitoring yourself for sure like make sure you're drinking water um make sure you salt water as well too you know not the table salt but pink salt himalayan salt sea salt that type of salt Angel says, that's what I was talking about, lisinopril. Yeah, lisinopril. I have a problem with lisinopril. All right, yeah, I got to go. Christy says, yep, I use coconut oil. There you go. There you go. Good, Christy. So Christy's talking about uh, for, the sun, for the sunshine. Uh, she uses sun, I'm sorry, shea butter and coconut oil. So that's what's up. Keisha, what is your take on taking elderberry? I'm down with it. I'm, I'm cool with it. Elderberry is good. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Uh, Charlene says, what can I do if my blood pressure is having an effect on my kidney function early stage uh, one and two? So I'm going to be honest with you. Um, right now, I hold back on talking, speaking on uh, kidney disease uh, in general. Um, but what I would tell you to do is you should definitely check your vitamin D levels. Um, you know, I'm curious to know what your blood pressure actually is. But the advice that I always give those those same things is what I would also recommend for you to get started with. You know, don't try to do it all at one time. But if you're drinking juice and soda, push those things out and go straight on water and do that for several days at a time. Do that for a week. Do that for two weeks. Uh, if you're eating processed foods and especially Chinese foods, I'm pointing because there's one right here. But especially Chinese foods, um, you know, these foods have been found certain. I don't know what additives or preservatives, but to have nephrotoxic uh, ingredients and nephrotoxic, you know, our kidneys have uh, the nephrons and they've been found to have actual uh, ingredients that are toxic to those nephrons. So I don't recommend it at all, uh, but you want to you want to lean heavy on a whole food diet, uh, sunlight, um, you know, get your get your blood work checked, get your minerals checked, 
and uh, do all the things that I was just talking about as far as improving your health. All right, y'all, I got to go. It's almost nine o'clock. Um, Tuesday says, can people get a consultation with you? Yeah, so uh, Tuesday, send me a message. Send me a DM right here on Facebook and um, I'll have somebody get right back with you, okay? All right, y'all, I got to go. I got to go. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to come back and um, read these questions, but I appreciate y'all. Please make sure you share this video. I felt like, you know, some pretty good information that people need to know. Um, debunking the idea of boosting your immune system. Uh, there's nothing you're going to take outside of you that's going to get you over that 100%. You already are funct You already have the ability and the potential to func function at 100% as pertains to your immune system. Uh, everything from out from there is about downregulating it. When you're doing those unhealthy things, such as the processed foods, the sodas, the juices, uh, you know, the the frequent eating, um, not getting sunshine, uh, not getting enough sleep, uh, stressing yourself out, all those things are downregulating your immune system. The things that upregulate your immune system are the is the water, the sunshine, the whole foods, the fasting, all those getting proper sleep, all those things uh, gets you back to that where you need to be. But there is no going above that 100%. Don't let people fool you into thinking that you can, you can be 100,000%. 100, 100,000. I'm on my body game. But you can be all the way up there uh, with your immune system. It's not true. And I don't want to propagate or continue that, uh, that, that idea that you can really boost up your immune system because that's going to leave the community uh, vulnerable to get hustled even more by thinking that you can take some kind of magical supplement, magical pill that's going to boost up your immune system. No, the best you can do is support it and get out the way. Support it and get out the way. The way you support it is by giving it the nutrients we just talked about, uh, doing the sleep, the water, the fasting, all those things is supporting your immune system and your health in general. And then getting out the way is the fasting. All right. So I appreciate y'all. Um, be sure to check out the link in the description. Um, Grab you a couple of bottles of vitamin D. Grab a couple of bottles. We have a sale right now. Don't be afraid. Go ahead, lean into it, get it. And um, I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later, all right? Love y'all. Peace. It's our community, our responsibility. We got what it takes. Peace.